Welcome to Power Query video number eight. Hey, if you want to download this file as well as the source files we're going to use and import using Power Query, click on the link below the video. Wow, you're not going to believe this video. We have three files here in this source folder, but let's go look at each one of these. On each one of the sheets, notice the sheet has the sales rep name and we have date, product, and sales. Each one of these workbooks has a different number of sheets. Not only that, but some of them have defined names. So this one does not. But again, you can see in this workbook, there's the sales rep name. And we're actually going to need to extract from the sheet name and add this to this data set. So when we do analyze, and we know all of these records are for Tyrone. So in a couple of the workbooks, we have, let's see, a defined name. There's a name right there. This is a table. One of the workbooks, we have a defined name. So there's a bunch of different objects. And we'll actually need to filter those out. So we're going to try and get all of the data sets from all the different sheets, from all the different Excel workbooks, extract the sales rep name, and filter out any extraneous objects. No problem at all if we're using Power Query. So Power Query, you got to go download it in Excel 2010 or 2013. It's a free download. All right, so Power Query, from file, from folder. Hey, last couple videos we've been doing this from folder because it just has so many amazing things we can do. Hey, we're going to click Browse. We're going to go find that source folder that has those three files. Click OK, click OK. Now, we're going to get some data about the actual files. We don't need any of it right now. I'm going to just right click the content column, remove other columns. Now, that's got the content, but we need to extract it. So we're going to add a column, add a custom column. We're going to call this Get Excel Data 01. And check this out. We're going to say Excel.Workbook. Open parentheses, please go get the content. I double click, it puts that in. That content is this column right over here. Now I click OK. Now we have this table column. We're still going to have to work with this, but I don't need this one anymore. So right click, remove. You can see over here there's a list of our steps. I'm actually going to call this. I'll call it Get All Sales, Rep Data, Multiple Sheets, Multiple Workbooks, Enter. Now, we're going to expand this and check this out. There's Name Data, Item, and Kind. We'll first look at the Kind column. Ah, This is cool. It tells us if it's a sheet, if it's a table, if it's a defined name. So our first step is going to filter this. But I want to take a look here. Here's the Name Table. But notice right up here, sheet, table, sheet, sheet. If you click on here and look at it, that's the actual raw data from the sheet. I'm going to uh, X that out over here. But if we go and look on the actual table, it's the same thing. So it's actually repeated here. Now the problem is when we go to filter this column, or the problem is when we filter out the table and define names, let's go do that. I'm going to click the Select All and Select Only Sheet. We'll actually go look at our query in just a second. It says the kind equals sheet only. So we filtered out the table and the define name. But no way, we're left with that actual table sheet. So watch this. Now we're going to go and use something that we use all the time in Excel, text filters. And I'm going to say, does not contain. So the logic here will be, our sheets are always going to have proper name. So anytime there's a sheet that doesn't have a proper name, we don't want it. So now I'm going to say, contains sheet. I better spell it right. Sheet. Click OK. And it filters it. Now let's go over to View, Advanced Editor. And here's our first couple of. Uh, lines of code. But the one we want to look at is right here, this filter. And that one says, 
only if it's a actual, the kind is a sheet. That's where we filtered out the table and defined names. And then down here, each not text contains, and then has the word sheet. That's where we filtered containing sheet. So anytime our sheet isn't properly named, it will not be imported. Now, guess what? This column has the names, and this will be repeated, and we'll name this column sales rep. This one has the data. Let's go ahead and click once, hold Control, click over here, and right click Remove Columns. We can click on one of these, and we can see that the field names are included as a record, and we don't want that. So we're going to fix that by adding an extra column, Add Custom Column. We'll call this. Get Excel data no headers 02. And here we say table dot promote headers. Open parentheses and it's the data we want. Double click, close parentheses. Click OK. Now these are the same. Oh, except for if we click and look, boom, we have our headers. If we click over here, we can see we have column one, column two, column three, and we don't want that. So right click, remove. You've got to be kidding. If we go over and look at our view, there's all the code. We still have one last step here, but check that out. There's the remove column, and there's the table promote headers. Click done. All right, so now I come over here to this side to side pointing arrow, click, and we want all of them. Now I can see that I haven't updated here. If I had updated, this is my home computer, and I haven't updated in the latest version you can check this and it will actually accept the field names from the tables click OK see now I have to actually name them now this one I'm going to name sales rep this one will be date product sales now we're going to have to go through back on the Home tab. Highlighted this column. I want to make sure the data type is. I'm going to say decimal, even though it's probably all whole numbers. This one I'm going to say text. Here we have a date, so I've got to make sure it's a date. This one's going to be text. And there we go, that whole list of steps. This view over here, Advanced Editor, that will do it. And if we add any more sheets with proper sales rep names or new files over in that folder, it all updates automatically. Now we're going to go to Home, Close, and Load to. And I'm loading this one to a table on a new sheet, Load. That is amazing, 3,533 rows. Look at that from all of those different workbooks. Control down arrow, that is simply profound what Power Query can do. Now, I'd like to actually go add some records over in one of our files. But before we do that, wouldn't it be nice if this just updated when we opened up the workbook? We're going to go over to Data and in Connect. In Connections, we go to the Connections button. And there's our Power Query. I'm going to click Properties. And right here, I'm going to say Refresh Data when opening the file. Click OK. Click Close. Control S. I'm going to close this and go over and add some data. Open up Othello. Add a new sheet. I'm going to call it Fran. So we got Fran. Control V. Now, the cool thing about this is we have our rule, right? The kind is a sheet, and it has a proper name. We have our file that it's the Power Query is already looking at. I'm going to Control S here. We also could have, instead of changing just the actual sheet inside there, if we add new files in here, it will update also. But let's go open our file. Here it is. I'm going to double click and open it. Look at that. It's already working. It's already working. There's the new records. We had 355 before. Now it's 386. That is simply amazing. And there's Fran at the bottom. Power Query is unbelievable. We'll see you next trick.